talking to a group of people where nobody's going through anything. Everybody's going through something. And so those rainbows this morning just flipped the script for me for a minute. And that message that I had worked on, it'll hold because I believe there's another one that needs to be preached. And so I'd, I'd like to ask if you would please stand and turn with me to Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. And then after I read the scripture, then I will sing the song that goes with that. I will try. I will attempt to do what, what I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me to do right now. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27, and I'll be uh, reading from the New International Version this morning, which is a more contemporary translation of the Bible for those of you who might struggle with the King James Version. I do. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27 says this, talking about Jesus. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. And without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples went and woke him and said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. And the men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Amen. You may be seated. And I'd like to use for a topic this morning, The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Y'all say that with me. The storm is passing over. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and most wise God, we thank you for your beautiful sign this morning on the way to church, the double rainbow, not one but two, to assure us that the storm is passing over. Help me right now, oh God, to bring this message to your people. The message that's coming to me right now, the one I know that is born of the Spirit. Help us to make a difference this morning. Help us to be changed for having been here this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Encourage my soul and let us journey on for the night is
But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen? Didn't he say that? He said you're going to have problems. You're going to have storms. Things are going to happen. But be encouraged because I'm with you. I, I have overcome the world. The storm is passing over. And so I, when I saw the rainbows this morning and, you know, going through my own personal storm, uh, you never know when one's going to come, do you, Sister Lee? You don't know. And so while I was sitting there, while I was driving to church, and I saw the first rainbow, and I said, God, I thank you for the sun that the storm is passing over. And then I saw the second rainbow. How many times do we see two? A double rainbow. It's rare. You hardly ever in your entire life see two rainbows at the same time. And I said, God, I thank you right now. I thank you for that sign that your promises are real, that you are with us in the storm. And so I couldn't stop thinking about it. When I came into church, I couldn't stop thinking about it when I was sitting up there about the rainbows and about the sign that God had given all of us this morning. Everybody that saw the rainbows, God was given that for everyone to see. And that the first rainbow that was mentioned, I believe, in the Bible was after the, the great flood. When Noah had built the ark, you know, to try to save or what could be saved of humanity, and the storm raged for 40 days, I'm sure they thought it would never be over. Everything that wasn't in the ark drowned, was destroyed, nothing but water, water everywhere, couldn't see nothing. When is it going to be over? Will it ever be over? Are we going to die on this boat? I'm sure some of them thought that. We might just be on this boat forever. But the storm did pass over. And they saw the rainbow, which was God's promise. I've been with you. I was with you. I brought the storm. I was with you in the storm. And the storm has passed over. Be of good cheer now. Go on with your life and take what you learn in the storm. Because I'm sure on the boat they had plenty of time to talk about it. What does this mean? Why are we here? How come he sent a storm like this? What are we going to do when it's over? So when it was over and they saw the rainbow, that was God's sign. Now go and live what you learn while you're in the storm. Amen? I hope you learned something while I'm in the storm. I'm trying to learn something in my own storm. And so when we look at this scripture, the thing that I, that I see that jumps out at me is it says, without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake. Without warning. How many times have we, you know, just been going along with our lives, minding our own business, thinking everything was normal, everything was going to, you know, go like we thought it was, as planned, and all of a sudden, without warning, a, a storm will come up without, with no notice. I didn't know that was going to happen. If I'd known that was going to happen, I'd be more prepared. I'd be more ready for it. And you know, that makes me think about the great magician Houdini, who could escape locked in chains in a cell, a telephone booth full of water with weights on his feet. Somehow he'd always miraculously escape every trap he would create. He'd say, watch me escape it. Watch me get out of it. Because he was ready. He it was ready. But the one time, and he could take a punch to the gut. He'd say, go ahead and punch me. And he'd get ready. He'd, he'd tighten his muscles. Go ahead and punch me. I'd take any punch, any punch. Go ahead, punch me. I can take it because he was ready. But then one time when he wasn't ready, he was just standing there. He's all relaxed in his belly, not even thinking about it, not even knowing a storm was coming, just relaxed, not ready for it. Somebody came up to him and said, take this, bam! And that's what killed him, because he wasn't ready. He got a punch that busted his spleen and his liver. Out of he wasn't ready. And so it is with us. Sometimes when a storm is coming, we don't know. He didn't know that man who was walking up to him was going to punch him when he wasn't ready. And so it is with us. We don't know sometimes when a storm is coming. Every, the blue sky, you know, it looks like sunny day ahead, but behind you is the black cloud that you didn't see coming up on you. And that's the storm. And it could be people. It could be relationships. It could be people with something going on with them. And all of a sudden now you've got some responsibility to help them, to be there for them. What am I going to do? How am I going to stand by them? Or it could be to us. I just found out one of my really good friends, she just was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was absolutely shocked 
And she had no clue that anything like that was going to happen to her. Health problems can just sneak up on us all of a sudden. They give you a sucker punch. Just bam! What? Are you kidding me? I'm really thinking about her right now because she had absolutely no clue that was going to happen to her. People, places, and things. We can be working and doing great on our job, and all of a sudden they say, well, you know, just have to tell you your assignment just ended. What? I thought I was tipped to perm. I thought I was going to get this job. Well, we're sorry. We have another temp assignment for you later. Store. You had plans for what you were going to do with your paycheck. You had plans for what you were going to do for your children or your girlfriend or your husband. You had plans. And all of a sudden, what? I'm laid off. I don't have a job. People, places, and things. Things go on. I'm sure that Mr. Minister Mathis, her daughter, was in Nepal doing missionary work. Just so focused and, and so devoted to the work that she had longed to do. And then all of a sudden, an earthquake. Are you kidding me? Out of nowhere, an earthquake completely destroys the country? And that was a storm that just came up suddenly on her. And then she was there and she was in danger, sleeping outside on the ground. And they say, all the Americans have to leave. What? Are you kidding? I know her heart is broken that she had to leave after all that she had done to get there. And so... These storms that come up on us, we might be having a great time with our people, wonderful time at a cookout, enjoying our family, enjoying our friends, and then somebody goes to talking about something that all of a sudden you're upset. Somebody says something at the party. Somebody says something at the family gathering. Somebody does something that all of a sudden hurts you or hurts somebody else, and a storm comes up. Everything was great until this very moment, then everything just fell apart like... A cheap family dollar dress, as Rev said, just fell apart. You know, some of us just have financial storms going on in our lives. Our money fell apart. We just didn't anticipate that, weren't expecting that. Our health fell apart. Our relationship fell apart. Our job fell apart. Something like that is going on in lots of places. And I'm sure that as I speak to you, some of y'all have been very disappointed this weekend or hurt. Or confused. Something's going on with some people in this room. Maybe not everybody, but some of y'all have a lot going on on the inside. You're in a storm that was without warning. Fear just came up all of a sudden like that. And so when that happens, sometimes we wonder, is God with us? You know, is God with me? Where are you God? How did that happen to me? Why is this happening to me now? You know, the timing of it is so bad. I could have accepted it better at another time. I could handle it better in another situation with different people around me or different set of circumstances. I could have done better, but not now. You know, God, where are you? Why did you let this happen to me? We'll feel sometimes like we're all alone. You know, and that looks to me like that's the way the disciples felt when all without warning this storm came up and the boat is going like this and the waves are, you know, so rough and choppy. They're like, we're going to... We're going to drown. The ship is going to capsize. We're all going to fall out. Where is God now? You know, why is this happening to us now? And they ran to Jesus, who was asleep. It said, and they, they couldn't believe he was asleep. How can you be asleep when we're in so much trouble? You know, sometimes we might feel like that God is asleep on us. That God is not working in our lives. That God has taken a nap on us. But you know what? Even if God seems to be quiet in our spirit, God is still there. And God is still working. Amen? And you know, God doesn't have to be, you know, up front shouting and hollering at us all the time. God has a small, still voice in our heart, in our mind that's there, you know? And we may feel like, where were you, God, when this happened? Where were you when I said what I shouldn't have said? How come he didn't stop me from saying that, God? Why didn't, why didn't you work on that person's heart and, and keep them honest from hurting me like that? All kinds of things we might be questioning, God. Are you in this situation? Are you with me? Are you in this storm? Did you allow this storm to happen to me for some reason? It could be that, that God allowed this storm to happen so that the disciples would realize just who Jesus was. Maybe they didn't realize who he was, that man down at the bottom of the boat. They knew that he was a prophet. They knew that he could work miracles. They'd seen that. But they didn't really know who he was yet until this storm came. And then they were afraid. And they, they, they finally remembered, oh, yeah, Jesus is down the bottom of the boat. You know, and they ran down there and they woke him up and they said, 
Jesus, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he said this, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? They got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. And so if any of us this morning are going through a storm, but one thing for sure, you're either headed into one, you're in one, or you're out of one. And if you're not in one right now, just keep living. You live long enough, and you're going to go back into another one. It just seems to be the circle of life, that we were never promised a rose garden. We were never promised a road without any potholes or ditches. We were promised that God would always be with us. Amen? He would never leave us nor forsake us. That's the promise. You know, that life is, is difficult. And so when they were in the the pit of despair and so afraid or just feeling so hurt, so disappointed, so wounded. You put your own so word in there. So fill in the blank. So frustrated. So tired. So confused. So angry. So hurt. You know, just so wounded. Just whatever it is you're so I'm just so whatever. I'm right there. Is God with me? Can God help me? I'm in the midst of a storm that came up just all of a sudden. I wasn't ready for it. And here I am. And I'm afraid. And I'm shaken in my spirit. I'm not, I'm not stable. You know, sometimes we're just not stable in our spirit. We're unstable. I'm unstable in my emotions. I'm unstable in the way I'm acting. I'm unstable in the things I'm saying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just like... It just happens. You know, we're not, we lost our balance. We're going like this. And that's what happened to the disciples after all they'd seen Jesus do. After the time they'd spent with him, they still didn't realize who they were with. And they were flipping out about the storm. So if you're flipping out about your storm this morning, my brothers and sisters, if that be you, remember what happened when they went to Jesus and said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he said, Oh, man, you people of little faith, why are you so afraid? And he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. And then I like this next part. It said the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. That's awesome. The wind and the waves obey him. This means that the wind and the waves obey him. If Jesus is in the situation and when the Holy Spirit starts to move, no matter what it is, God can handle it. God can deal with it. We can deal with it with God's help. I can't deal with it on my own. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of stuff going on in life. I can't deal with it by myself. If I try to deal with it by myself, I will drown in my sorrow. If I try to deal with it by myself, I will drown in my anger. If I try to deal with it by myself, I will drown in my confusion and in my disappointment, you know, and in my, my, my urge to get back. Now, I don't know if anybody in here has ever had that feeling. You just got an urge to get them back. You know, somebody, uh, somebody has hurt you. Someone has done something to somebody you love, and you just have this urge. You're just going to drown in your, you know, urge to get back. You're drowning. It. It'll mess you up. You gotta let it go. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Actually, you can't let it go. I can't let it go. But with God's help, God can let it go for us and in us. And so they were amazed and said, wow, what kind of man is this? This man is the Son of God. This man is the one that God chose to reveal himself to us. His character, his nature, his unconditional love, and his power. His power to quiet the storm. And so right now, that, that is the message this morning. It doesn't take a whole long time to preach it. That is the message is that Jesus can quiet the storm. He can calm the winds. He can calm the waves. He can say, peace be still in our lives. Is anybody in here this morning need some peace? Peace be still. God is able no matter what it is. He can speak to the wind and the waves in our lives. And he can say, peace be still. It's real. It's no fairy tale. It works. And then, just like this morning, we saw the dull rainbow. Such a beautiful sign.
from God that the storm is passing over. It won't last forever. No matter what it is, it doesn't last forever. It might last longer than we want it to. And that's, that might be true. We might wish it was over before it is, but it won't last forever. Time is a healer. If you give God some time, He can bring us through the storm. If you want, if everybody's, everything, everything's got to be right now, then you're not going to see some of the miracles that God has to show you because some of the miracles are unfolding. They are ongoing. It takes a while to perform the whole miracle. And so you've got to walk with God and be with God as you go through the storm because you're not going to see the miracle until you're out of it, until the end. And then you look back and you see where God brought you from. And you look back and you see how he brought you through. And you look back and you can't believe that you got through that storm. You can't believe it. How did I do that? How did I get through that? I never thought I could deal with that. But God is able. And Jesus was the one that God chose to reveal himself to humanity. And so we know if this Jesus that I call Lord, who's the head of my life, and Savior, who saved me from myself, Save me from my sin. Save me from the penalty, really, that I owe God for not living right until I got right, got better. I'm not perfect. Y'all say progress, not perfection. Progress. Yeah, let's don't let's don't beat ourselves up that we're not perfect yet. But when we when we let that Spirit of Christ live in us and we're born again on the inside, have a new heart, and we feel differently about things. We don't feel the same way like we used to, and we think differently with our new mind. That's what enables us while we're in the storm to remember that God is able, that we're not alone, no matter what it is we're going through, that God is with us and the storm is passing over. Let us stand. That is